Hello, good evening, and welcome to the 10th Lake County Film Festival. Uh, I am. Uh, this is the Q&A session for the narrative feature, uh, Woman of the Photographs, by Takeshi Kushida. Uh, normally, I try not to start my weekend Q&As until uh, 7 o'clock, but um, uh, Takeshi's Q&A was scheduled for, um, I don't know, like, three o'clock in the morning <laughs> time in Japan. So I rescheduled it for right now. Um, please welcome Takeshi Kushida. How are you? Good. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Good. Um, so your film, uh, one of the photographs is playing. It's been uh, very successful on the circuit. You already won several awards and, and played at a bunch of different festivals. So I'm really excited to have you here. Uh, it's a very interesting film. If anyone hasn't seen it yet, you should probably go watch it before you watch this Q&A. Because we tend to really break things down and talk about, uh, you know, spoilers and uh, what things mean. So uh, first question, Takeshi, uh, you wrote uh, and directed this film. Uh, where did you get the idea um, for this story? Yeah, uh, I was inspired to make a film about the relationship between a woman and photographs 10 years ago. Uh, at that time, I was making a poster for cosmetics advertisement with the Japanese actress. And she was obsessed with retouching her image. She had her exclusive retoucher, and she told him to make her eyes bigger, remove her necklines, slim the waist. And finally, her face and body got totally different from real herself. She looked very happy with the result at that time, but she quit the actress after two years. She didn't, she didn't tell us why she quit the actress, but I thought that she couldn't keep doing actress because she confused with the reality and imagination. She was successful to change herself to be liked by a lot of people, but as a result, she lost who she really is. And that kind of case was only for excep exceptional people 10 years ago, like singer, models, actress. But now, a lot of women are changing their figures in photographs by using retouching applications and filters. So I decided to make a film about women and photographs now. I, um, uh, yes, uh, so basically it was the exact situation that happened in the movie is what you're, what you're experiencing. And the pressure, uh, I, I feel pressure just sitting in this Q&A box. Uh, every <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I had to brush my hair uh, every time. <laughs> I can only imagine how hard it is to have thousands of people uh, watching you. Uh, many people say that this is a horror film, uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, your appearance at Fright Fest uh, seems to have been very popular. I see very many uh, reviews uh, online for that. Uh, do you think your film is a horror film? Yeah, I think Uman of the Photographs is a romance horror film. Uh, I'd like to have romance element and horror element in one film because love and fear are two most important things for the human being to live. <laughs> uh, oh, wow, I just noticed I didn't uh, finish this question here that I had written down, but um, yeah. So you say uh, romance and horror are similar. And I asked in one of my questions that I didn't finish, you open the film showing that Kai is meticulously clean. He's cleaning his windows and he's dusting uh, everything. Uh, yet love is often very messy. Uh, how does the fact that he is so clean, uh, how does that uh, represent his character? Right. Uh, he, uh, his house is he's clean, but uh, he's not very obsessed with cleaning the place, but he is a man of habit. Uh, maybe he's very uh, 
his life is based on time. He wakes up at the same uh, time every morning and do the same thing. That is the rhythm of his, his life. And he's comfortable. He's satisfied with that tempo. But woman comes in his house and his time is messed. Uh, yes. but, yeah. but finally he finds uh, he falls in uh, love with her. You have to let yourself allow that mess into your life when you decide to open yourself to a relationship. It is, yes. Uh, because the, uh, you know, the, in this film, Uman, Kyoko, uh, needs him in the end. And he finds that uh, he is, he exists in her heart and he likes that him in her heart. So he can love herself and he can love himself together in same time. That's why he falls in love with her. Uh, like all art, I think horror is at its best when it has a political undercurrent behind it. But your film seems to bring the socio-political statements to the forefront. What can you tell me about the horrors of social media and image consciousness? Yeah, I think that social media is scary because <laughs> it consumes our images. Once our images are posted on social media, it is evaluated with the number of likes. And the number give us the ple pleasure and fear together. We can have the pleasure to be liked by someone, but at the same, same time, it becomes a fear because the image which is which shows the past ourselves remains forever. And that image stimulates our approval desire and force us to be like that image. So we cannot go forward if you uh, pass the number of likes. Do you, do you think that uh, your film has a message of body positivity uh, when she's open uh, and, and when she forgoes the image consciousness, she actually gets more likes. Uh, do you uh, think it's because of uh, because you're trying to give a body positive message? Do you think that would be a good social change? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, good and bad together. The, <laughs> because it's not natural to appealing ourselves too much. If you appeal ourselves too much. Uh, that becomes an uh, idol, uh, idealized figure as well. So it's important. Maybe first we can uh, shout, but if our images are uh, approved, we don't need to shout anymore. Just be natural. Uh, I'm curious about the differences between our two cultures when it comes to image consciousness. Uh, much of the public perception here in the U.S. shows image consciousness as a large problem, yet it seems like even a larger problem there. Last year, we showed a film uh, from Japan about a hikikomori, and this sort of extreme shut-in isn't nearly as common here. Uh, also, the birth rates in Japan and most of Asia are hitting historic lows. Do you have any insight about these differences between our two cultures? Yeah, uh... I have been to the United States a couple of times, and I think that United States and Japan are very different. <laughs> I think that people in Japan are less confident to ourselves to compare with people in United States. I went to New York and I thought that people are very confident with themselves. I felt that. And I think one of the reasons 
why Japanese people are not very good at loving ourselves is that reason is maybe because uh, education. What we are told on school is understand what the other is thinking and make a lot of friends. And I think that that is exactly what social media is asking us to do. Understand what other needs and make a lot of friends. So there's no wonder that social media is so popular in Japan and people are not very conscious about retouching their image. And hmm. yeah, birth rate. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, in order to give a bath, we have to love the other person first. Uh, I think that people are trying to love the other person too much in Japan. And it makes it difficult for him or her to love the other because they are trying to uh, love other and uh, and not themselves uh, yeah 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 no that's a common yeah that's a what we call a trope here it's uh mm -hmm. it's a common saying you know that, that you have to love yourself before you can love someone else it is yes yes um why is kai uh so obsessed with insects uh, he has a praying mantis. He goes out um, uh, uh, searching uh, for insects to take photos of. Um, is having a praying mantis a common uh, <laughs> a, a common pet uh, there? <laughs> I have no. common pets. I'm not going to judge anyone for keeping uncommon pets. But um, uh, what does that say about his character? Uh, uh, uh. He, he is obsessed with shooting uh, insect photo because uh, his insect photo were awarded when he was in elementary school. So insect photo is something uh, which gives him confidence. So he pursues taking insect photo. And having Pregnant this as a pet is not very common. <laughs> and let me talk about uh, why there's a play playing mantis uh, in this movie. Uh, before I started to write a screenplay, I decided the target audience. My target audience was male and over. 35 years old. Uh, in, in other words, I, want, I wanted to make a film for people like me who like horror, romance, and comedy. And as the film is for male, I thought that the enemy should be female. And in order to create the female villain character, I was thinking of scary aspect of women. And finally, I found out the habit of praying mantis because the female mantis eats male mantis after the mating to get the nutrition to giving a bath. And I started to do a research for praying mantis and I met a professor who specializing in praying mantis. I met, I met him and asked him why the male mantis uh, allows female mantis to eat him. And he said that it is because male mantis is feeling the ultimate pleasure when he is eaten. The male mantis the view of the life and death is totally different from people. His reason of living is leaving offspring. And male mantis knows that his existence becomes greater by sacrificing his body for the female mantis. 
I thought that makes sense. So I decided to make a film about a man who sacrifices himself for a woman in order to feel his existence greater. Cool. Uh, uh, the uh, common expression here is love is war. <laughs> <laughs> love is war, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, that's for the first part, not the praying mantis part. Uh, yeah. You know, and also uh, it makes sense when you say I didn't. I didn't realize that he had won awards for shooting insects earlier, and that seems to make a lot of sense that he would want to relive his past victories. Yeah, because he doesn't seem like he is very victorious right now. Mm. When we meet him, you know, in his little shop. Mm. Uh, the film overall is very tight and economical with dialogue, and most of Kai's character and feelings are shown without speaking. Uh, what is it like writing for the character and directing the actor in uh, in such a uh, such a fashion? Um, I made the photographer silent in order to make him look like an um, honest person, because I believe that body expression is more honest than the words. I think that the Charlie Chaplin in silent film is still the most sympathy inviting character in cinematic history. And, and the actor of Kai, Hideki Nagai, is very good at acting like uh, actor in silent film e era. And I decided the cast just after making short synopsis and before making it into a script. And it ha helped me a lot to write a screenplay. I would like to imagine how the characters look like in a writing process. Uh, when I make a film, I always pay attention to have a good subject. And since the subject is found, my challenge begins in order to make it into the images which has cinematic pleasure. Although it is difficult to explain what cinematic pleasure is in words, I believe that it is the mo moment that the audience feels the emotional connection with the characters on screen. So I prefer to decide the actors before writing screenplay. Roger Ebert uh, used to say that movies are a machine that generates empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and those are the best, you know, those are the best ones, obviously. It's interesting that you mentioned Charlie Chaplin because I feel like your, uh, well, Kai especially is so much more subtle than the silent film stars. Mm -hmm. He's he's not as express. He's not as bold mm -hmm. or big. He plays it close. You know, you keep him tight. You know, unlike a a silent film, unlike a Chaplin or a or a you know Buster Keaton or whatever. You he's he's tight. He's wound up. That tells us a lot. But it's interesting because it's so different. Chaplin is so different from what you're talking about. Uh, there is a large age difference between your main characters, which is exaggerated by the obsolete technology in, in Kai's shop. Uh, what is the importance of the gap uh, in the character's age? Uh, I didn't uh, make them in the same age because I wanted to uh, the different in surface of characters. We are different. In, in, because I believe that we are different in on surface, but in the bottom of heart, we are connected. So I made the characters uh, different age. And then he's also of a different technological age. Mm -hmm. You know, she has a phone and he uses the computer and yeah. the fax machine and... and uh, <laughs> <laughs> You shoot uh, mostly with a very basic uh, style that's maybe reminiscent of Ozu. 
which uh, uh, many shots are locked off and static. Uh, later in the film, though, there are some amazing stylistic shots uh, spinning around uh, this way and, and all sorts of cool things. Uh, what, what, can you talk about your philosophy behind your shots? Yeah. Uh, I like Ozu film, of course, because in his film, the background, the production design tells the story and the character's emotion. And in Uma of the film, uh, Uma of the photographs, I wanted to do that. And I wanted background to tell the emotional st status of character. And I made it static shot because I wanted to give an audience to have a time to explore the background. So I want, so I made uh, a lot of shots static. And there are some stylistic shots and in order to express the subject of the film, which is living in between reality and imagination. Uh, reflections in mirrors, screens, and water are key trope of the film. And uh, I think that the border between reality and imagination is getting more and more blurred. And so not certain. So I made camera move a lot because uh, to make it uh, to make to express to make it blur that which which is real and which is reflected image. Hmm, that's very interesting. Uh, the film is fairly uh, gloomy and subdued, yet it ends with a moment of uh, complete whimsy and playful camera movement and uh, the, not, the flashes with not a camera. Uh, why is that important to you? Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So the question is about why? The end, the, the very end, yes. when he's end. shooting without a camera and yeah. the camera is swirling around and... <laughs> because... Uh, uh, it is important. I, to be honest with you, I like Bollywood films. Have you seen Bollywood films? It's Indian films. Oh, Bollywood, Bollywood, yes. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of Bollywood films ends with dance sequence. And <laughs> awesome. And when I leave the cinema after watching Bollywood film, I, I am so satisfied and I feel very happy. And I wanted the to audience to feel the same thing if, if they come and see my film. I have to tell you, uh, you know, when I prepare for these uh, questionnaires, I often ask questions where I think I know what the answer will be, but that is uh, not an answer. <laughs> 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 I expect it at all. That is fantastic. Um, you can still, I can still be surprised sometimes. That's that is so cool. No, that's great. Oh, wow. Uh, what do you most hope people will take away from this film? Uh, you know, uh, as I told you, love others to love yourself. If you can love, if you can find your favorite to yourself in the other person's heart. You can love the other and yourself together. Cool. As I mentioned, you already played at uh, many festivals and picked up several awards. Uh, what's next for the film? Do you have more festivals? Do you have anyone looking at distribution? Uh, I'm looking for distribution. Uh, Uma of the photographs will be shown in Japanese cinemas from January, but uh, I want this film to be shown in United States. So I'm, I hope I can do that. Maybe in theater, maybe in on DVD. 
I, I just try to uh, we uh, we mentioned beforehand that uh, you guys are open, cinemas are open there, but I yeah. don't expect them to be open here anytime mm. soon, unfortunately. Maybe the summertime. Mm. And, um, yeah, and, and it's very strange. Do you still collect physical media? DVD, yeah. Blu-ray? It seems like not many people do that here. Um, <laughs> you know, so it, it might have to just be VOD, but I, I hope. Uh, I hope you can uh, can get a physical release. That is always nice to uh, have a nice film on the shelf, yeah. you know, even though many of them are not available. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have future projects you're working on? Yes, I am working on my next feature film. And I'm, uh, I just found the subject. And the subject of next film will be the Tooth Spain. Uh, oh. Maybe maybe next film will be the story of dentist, because tooth pain is common throughout the world. Doesn't matter Japan, US, US, or African countries, and I want to make a film which can be enjoyed by people with different language, culture, and different race. So I think. To Spain will be a good subject. I don't remember if I read that somewhere else, <laughs> but it struck me so much because um, I, it is the worst pain I've ever had. <laughs> it is it is the worst, and I have a very I have very strange nerves. Apparently, uh, do you do you know what I'm saying? The nerves inside yeah, no, my mouth. Yeah. So oftentimes. When you have pain, they will ask you, um, are you sensitive to cold, mm -hmm. right? But when I have strong tooth pain, cold is the only thing that stops it. Why? <laughs> and I, will, I will suck on ice cubes, uh, you know, I take yeah. ice water. I will, I will drink, and, and the pain sometimes is so much that I will do anything to keep cold um, on it. One time I was in so much pain and I was out of ice and I went to my bathroom and turned the shower all the way to cold. <laughs> and I put my mouth under the shower, uh, get all the cold water in my mouth and I was shivering. The rest of my body was shivering and cold, but I just needed to keep the cold um, on my tooth. So I'm very much looking forward to your tooth pain film. <laughs> that is so cinematic. I think everyone can feel the sympathy to that sequence. <laughs> so I, was, I was literally like freezing and I was just like, uh, oh, so waiting, cinematic. waiting for more ice to make in the fridge, in the freezer, you know? Oh boy. Oh, well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, very enlightening, uh, fantastic film. I, I just watched it again uh, yesterday, a second time. And um, yeah, I mean, everything I said, it's just so interesting uh, uh, as you go through it. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and uh, everyone else, we'll see you in an hour or so. Thank you very much. Thank you.